Hello everyone, welcome to the 15th episode of the Chicken Chess Club podcast. I'm French Grandmaster Laurent Fressinet and I'm thrilled to welcome my dear friends, future, maybe, maybe future, um, deputy, uh, president of, uh, the international, of FIDE, Fédération Internationale des Échecs, Mr. Peter Heine Nielsen and the current coach of the German team who is already in Chennai for the uh, upcoming Olympiad. How was the trip, Jan? It was good. It was good. It took a while, but we're finally here. Everyone's happy. Hotel is nice. We had a very nice lunch. The room is nice. So not much to complain about. Like I've been, I've been on the road for a while. I took the train to Frankfurt on, I don't know what day, Sunday night. Stayed there overnight and waited in German. I know that was Saturday night. And Sunday, I went to the airport in Frankfurt at like 11 a.m. The flight was 3.30, so I thought it was early. But there were some strikes in Frankfurt, a proud tradition that I'm sure Laurent knows all about. And yeah, stuff moved slowly, so we, we barely made the flight after standing in, in lines for a couple hours. But it was all fine. Went to Dubai, had a nice little break in Dubai, got some smoothies at the airport, met... Our dear friend Jorn van Forest, who, who wasn't traveling, I think he just lives in Dubai Airport now. He came to say hi to the gate. I tweeted a picture of the gate. Jorn showed up, said hi, and said, okay, I'll go back to my hotel. Um, I don't know what he's doing. I guess he will come to Chennai eventually, but he just seemed very comfortable in Dubai Airport. I met some feed officials. I will report all, all the details of these, of these meetings that were on the flight from Dubai to Chennai with us, to Peter later, um, full transparency. Yeah, that, that's about it. Then we were Chennai. Everyone's very, very helpful. Like they have these special, special immigration counters for chess Olympiad only. And there are lots of volunteers. So it went fairly smoothly. We made it through there, got sent to a bus, got driven to the hotel. No complaints. It was a long trip. I was on the road for, I don't know. 40 hours total, but uh, everything went very nicely. Hotel is nice. Happy to be here. Just incredible. I didn't even start my, my journey. I'm, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still in Paris. No panic. We, we are leaving tomorrow at uh, something like 11 a.m., I think. So ah, they are telling us to, to, to be at the airport four hours before the... Just that, but this is not, this is not <laughs> happening. <laughs> I mean, two hours will be the maximum, but, uh, <laughs> let's see, let's see how it goes. I, I actually, I already filled in the, all the paperwork, <laughs> so I'm quite happy and relieved because this is very long. I mean, this immigration, uh, stuff, this visa stuff, just very, very annoying. I mean, they are the kind, they ask all kind of questions like, what is your religion? Which, I mean, um, annoyed me. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a question. It's just very weird. You don't like transparency uh, in these kind of private matters. I mean, like, I didn't know what to answer, to be honest. No, <laughs> so there was one choice, problem. Christian, and then I looked at it, and the other choice was, like, other, but then you have to specify, and I thought, ugh, why, why, why bother? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a bit odd. Also, like, your father's name, and is your father a, what is it? natural german or did he immigrate or there was all kinds of uh, questions that that were yeah. were confusing but i made it through it's important for you guys who are still yeah. traveling to um do this self-declaration form which i hadn't done i was aware when i was to do it but i thought i don't know my seat in the plane yet and it's asking for it so i'll leave it open but then I had uh, some anxious moments when they asked for it at Frankfurt Airport. They had to fill it out on my phone, and it takes a while, and they had to accept it, and to get some confirmation email. So it's good to do that early and print it out. Jan's, Jan's travel yeah. advice. But why are you there so early? Because we're professionals, Peter. We're professionals. Uh, we're, we want two days to acclimatize, get used to the weather, the food... Like, do a little bit of bonding, a little bit of team building, in case something would have gone wrong, not everyone has their hotel rooms, we had time to react. Like, I don't think it's excessive to be here two days early. Like, you can do, like, the French and travel last minute, then run to the board <laughs> from, from the airport. But, like, we wanted two days to, like, have a look around. But you're so, 
No, but the, the, the fun part <laughs> is that yesterday we, we, we were chatting and I saw, I really thought that we were playing on Thursday. <laughs> So I said, ah, of course, this is too much. We Friday. arrive Thursday night, 2 a.m., and we have to play at 2 p.m., so probably I will claim a free day of already in the first round. And then you, you just told me that uh, we are playing on Friday, actually, which was the best news of the day uh, yesterday, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jan. You're very welcome. <laughs> that was no, nice. But you saw the World Championship. Magnus just came very late, just comes there, play. Then you you get tired less quickly of the plays and such. You risk uh, sort of, uh, you know, getting tired of each other and the plays like this, I think. That's I like... agree with that, actually. And what I suggested as a big selfless professional is let's get another nice hotel nearby, close to the time zone, and then switch a day before, travel a day before. Uh -huh. But it didn't quite work out because the players had to finish Beal, Dortmund, they had to finish their tournaments. And then within these two days, it seemed excessive to do some extra traveling for that. Okay. So we thought okay. second best thing is to go here mm -hmm. okay. two days early. So... Uh so how about you, uh, Peter? You will come later to. to China I'm actually, I'm actually, to, uh, I'm actually well. coming to Jena. Yes, this was unclear the last time we spoke, but now I have uh, booked tickets and, and everything, so I should be arriving uh, qu quite late from from your perspective. But I think uh, I, I will arrive on the the free day if I'm sort of s sort of. Uh, on the yeah. free day, you should you should come one day before the free day, because otherwise you miss the, the party. I don't uh, care. I don't it's like uh, the party. You're I not coming to the Bermuda party? Uh, it's, no. it's where the election has been won. Uh, Come on. Yeah, of course. Uh, I disagree. It's won by values, not by drink, drinks. Uh, no, no, you, you're completely you're wrong. wrong. <laughs> no, no, of course. You, you miss, like, I mean, you are meeting like all the delegates uh, in a friendly and uh, in a very friendly atmosphere. You so can buy them drinks. Yeah, that is thing. illegal. Uh, maybe buying drinks is probably drinks, legal, yeah. actually. It's, there is very sort of... You cannot give them tickets, for instance, but you can probably buy a drink. You're right. Uh, there is quite some specifications there. Yeah, okay. So I will, uh, I will, I will, I will If you give us a budget, we can buy the delegates' drinks <laughs> on your behalf. Yeah. Ah, yes, please. Uh, sure. Uh, anyway, I'm coming there. And, uh, well, this weekend I was hanging out with wife and kids in, in Palanga, the Lithuanian seaside, uh, as you guys know. And so, so uh, well, we're doing different kind of stuff at the moment. But uh, else I'm my usual self in a jolly mood on Twitter, this kind of stuff, uh, golfing. And playing yeah, golf, yeah. No? playing golf and well, I mean, yeah. at times I play golf, and other times I'm at the seaside with kids and such. Now, uh, before Chennai, I'm going to to Denmark again with uh, wife, kids, and uh, and such. So that's gonna be that's gonna be uh, nice as well. How do you manage to do all the great things you do around your schedule of golfing and? And traveling, like it looks, uh, it looks rough to fit in everything else. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's less complicated than you think. I don't do that much, so I think I, I just barely managed to 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 to, to get it all done. Uh, and uh, well, playing golf is not uh, maybe it's hard, but it doesn't take necessarily that much space. So uh, um, yeah, th thanks for the concern, but I think I can I can <laughs> I can manage to squeeze genuine concern squeeze, as usual. Squeeze it into my daily routines. That's good. I yeah, I got I got okay, nothing so I else. I just should... woke up. Okay. Fair um, enough. No, but it's, it's good. Uh, I'm very happy that at the start you you mentioned the, the strike in uh, in Germany because uh, yeah, there is more more strikes. I mean facts. I mean number numbers are clear. There is more strikes in Germany than in France. So I'm very happy that you. You just pointed out that. So you think it's an unfair cliche that there are so many strikes in France? Yeah, it's a very, it's a very unfair cliche. Yeah, yeah. Okay. which uh, for which you are, you are mocking, uh, you are mocking me way too much. Actually, then no, it's not, it's not high on my list of stuff to mock about. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, Peter is mocking. Like, Peter, he's like, more, yeah, he's more into it. Yeah, um, yeah he's, he's more I have been accused of bullying online recently, so that's probably true. Um, so yeah, the, in Denmark has strike. SAS has been striking a lot. So I'm I'm flying with a different company to Chennai. So I'm not taking that kind of risks. But can uh, you reveal which company or is? Yeah, but I cannot fully remember. I think more so that uh, that's. I mean, it's embarrassing, but I don't remember exactly. So I would rather not. Uh, I like to be transparent, but I don't want to disinform. So I, I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. 
So that was the um, first tournament where after, I mean, like uh, Magnus announced that he won't defend his title. So he had to play uh, Rapid and Blitz in Zagreb, where um, it was, of course, Zagreb is part of the Grand Tour with uh, Guy Kasparov being the brain of this uh, event, of this tour, uh, basically. So he was there as well. And, uh, well, uh, Magnus uh, won one more time. Uh, even, I think, I think he's not part of the, of the Gunches Tour. He's just a wild card. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so, does, he, he cannot win the whole thing. But, uh, well, he will play in Sinkerfield Cup um, later, later in August. September. And he might, uh, he, he might uh, do very well without playing in, <laughs> in all the events. So, I don't know. So what did you guys think? It was a five-day rapid blitz, three days of rapid, two days of blitz. This rapid was 25-10, so quite long games, three day. I had a great time. I did commentary with our dear friend Lawrence Trent. And after the serious commentary I've been doing recently with you, did like trying to analyze the games and so on, to, to just mock, uh, mock Lawrence and have a good time for a couple of days. It was very enjoyable. I'm not sure if for the listeners, probably not, but I had a good time. Laurent was also there for a day. We were also. I, I enjoyed it. I'm not sure if it was mutual, but I had a good time, yeah, which no, was, was very nice. important. No, it was nice. No, one day was uh, one day was was nice. No, no, no. Okay. Really, it was uh, also the games. Uh, I mean, somehow I think they are just taking by, by hiding, but the field was uh, kind of nice with this guy Saric. Um, and m- many, many, I, when you have Mamedia off, you always have, a, basically, you always have a decisive game, uh, per, uh, per hand. <laughs> uh, I mean, Magnus in the first, then I started to follow after we commentated and in this blitz, I, mean, I was watching live and, I mean, Magnus, the first day he was, he did seven wins and two loss. I mean, not, uh, not a single draw in the nine blitz games. I mean, this is very unlikely. So, Overall, it was quite um, quite um, enjoyable uh, show. Yeah, this guy Saric play always playing some exciting stuff. Some sharp Sicilians, very principled guy. Um, Jordan, our boy, playing an excellent yeah. tournament, has to be said. I think he won the rapid portion. Was he also was very much in there. I think close to the lead after the first day of blitz. And of course, we're used to to mocking him in training camp, but it was nice to see. Him having such a great bounce back event, really looking like he belonged. He slightly collapsed on the last day in the blitz, but all the time he was right up there with the best players in the world, with the Magnus Wesley, Maxime, Ali Reza. So I was very impressed. A lot of fresh opening ideas, as typical. A lot of energy. Um, yeah, was was nice to see that. I should I should I I should mention my 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 boys. Uh, for the last uh, for the last day of blitz, uh, Maxim Vashilagrav scored eight out of nine, uh, uh, reminding everyone why uh, he won the, the World uh, Blitz uh, Championship uh, last December. And Ali Reza lost to Maxim, but uh, did seven and a half out of nine, beating Magnus uh, in the process. Mag- m- m- to be fair, Magnus w- won the tournament with two rounds to spare, lost the last two, so he's not, now I think number five. In the blitz, uh, I think blitz, which is not. It was number one number with one, two rounds to spare, right? Like then yeah, it yeah, and then went lost the last two, which was a pity. But uh, it was a good performance from uh, from Magnus. What, 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 what we should think? let Peter speak. Like uh, I don't like these stretches where we where we shut Peter out for five minutes because you can tell by his face yeah. he gets anxious. He's like he, he needs to tweet in the meantime. No, no, I just tune out. Uh, but well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's one of these events where I think Magnus does maybe less well than expected, but wins the event, which gives uh, away something about his class, right? But uh, I don't think it was a particularly well well event for him. It was not too bad either, but um, I didn't think that he showed particularly how good he was in any way, but it was, was good enough. I mean, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Also, it was very up and down. I mean, you remember this day where he won seven uh, Blitz game and then uh, lost two... And some of those he lost was really pretty horrific level. Some of the other games he won was pretty good and such. So it was, 
very much up and down. For me, it was also a bit strange because it was the first time. Well, since Starwanger, that was, uh, I mean, when he, he, he played chess, so also for me it was a bit back to work, but I can't say I, I worked uh, a lot or very impressively, uh, to put it mild. But at least it was a tournament again, so that was nice, nice to see. But um, it looked comfortable for, for Magnus, but nothing more than, than that, I would say. I think he's capable of playing much, was... much better, I'm sure. He was impressive at the very least in stretches. Like he had a bad to rapid day one, I think. But then when it, when it was winning time in Blitz on the first day when he won these five in a row, and also on the mm-hmm. second day when he faced Nepomnesh, he was slightly closing in, or he was facing challengers. He he didn't give them any chance. So the final score looked a lot closer than it actually was because he lost the last two after he won the tournament. And I thought it was impressive still just to see his classes game he won against Nepomnishi. And I don't recall the individual games, but on the first day of Blitz, when he, when he starts rolling, he's just uh, unstoppable. And it's, it's still very impressive to see. Yes, he's the only, the only guy who can make such... I mean, not counting Aliaza because we don't have to... We don't see him uh, so much, but the only guy who can do this kind of runs is, uh, is Ambien. Uh, MVL is in Blitz, sometimes he just can win like 8 out of 9 was just uh, amazing. I, I think only only two people uh, may do or are doing this kind of result from time to time. It's uh, MVL and uh, Magnus. Uh, so you're saying not counting French players, <coughs> Magnus is impressive. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean like you, you have to give credit to... to to the French guys, uh, I mean, eight and seven and a half, I mean, just uh, in this field. Yeah. It's just amazing. I mean, it's really the game. And b- some beautiful, I remember this game, uh, uh, Nepo against MVL, which is maybe the game of the tournament with Queen C6. It's nice geometric. You should check the, the Blitz game. It's just really, um, really a very, very nice game. I don't know what you You probably still remember that one, Jan. I remember a lot of the games still. And yeah, Maxime, when he catches fire... It's the precision is amazing. Like I mean, it's hard because he's so gifted. Hard to argue. He's, he's so, so gifted, his so. hand just yeah. seems to do the job. I mean, it's yeah, one can just sit back and uh, and admire. He makes all the moves so quickly. It seems to seems to flow so easily. It is very impressive. So many uh, many people uh, reacted to the um, uh, to to Magnus not defending his title, and I was very surprised by uh, I don't know what you guys think. About that, what Kasparov said, that the, the next, uh, the winner of the next match cannot be considered as a 17th world champion because he didn't beat Magnus. But uh, <laughs> that sounds weird because it's not really the problem of uh, Nepo or Ding, no? Did you see that or not? I didn't see that quote off the top of my head. I would also disagree you there's nothing you can do if the incumbent world champion retires no like the line you want to stop the line forever or like uh, how does it work yeah and he also i mean kasparov comments were very interesting that people they don't want to see long games and they want rapid and blitz so he was all for including rapid and blitz in the classical world championship which is I mean, weird to me because uh, Kasparov played <laughs> matches which lasted like for more than six months. But hello, Peter. Yeah, mainly I have been debating with Ogor, but uh, as I get complained that I co- pronounce it correctly and no one understands it, I should say that he well, he's known as Agat. Uh, but well, we had some debates online uh, about these things, but uh, in general. I mean, it was for me as expected. It was a more of personally relieved that now it's uh, it's official and such, and one can uh, fully plan according to it. But um, I mean, I mainly paid attention to if someone was criticizing feeder and such, right? So you know, uh, no. Um, well, I think it was quite expected. Uh, I was quite surprised with how shocked some people seemed to be, but I think generally people. Just didn't believe Magnus would do it, and uh, that was maybe the main thing for for me in a way. Um, 
And uh, you are right that also Kasparov's comments surprised me, me quite some. I think, he, but Kasparov also showed some understanding of it. Then, of course, uh, well, there is this debate if it's bad for chess and if it's Magnus Fall and stuff like that and such. And uh, well, it's interesting to follow, but I, for a change, I can't say I have a strong opinion on it. No, but it's not a debate. I mean, like, of course, it's bad for chess. I mean, I mean, yeah, I agree. Kind of, I mean, it could be bad, and then. It could be, but I mean that the, the best player in the world is not playing the, the main event. Uh, I mean, like uh, from um, media-wise, tradition-wise. <laughs> I mean, like the, the World Championship match is, has always been the, the main I, event. I, in, in I chess. agree, and uh, if you read the, the Barry Polis Nielsen interview, we also think that well, it's generally bad that chess now has both the, the female and the Opal title the best player has chosen not to play because they think it's not interesting. I mean, there's very few sports who has it like this. And of course, that's a generally bad sign. But, uh, well, not much to do about it uh, currently. But of course, uh, well, it's more cool in other sports when the world championship is uh, by far what matters and what everybody wants to play. But um, it's a bit of a special situation that Magnus won five times in a row and, and, and such. Uh, it's um, it's an unfortunate Actually, situation. I mean, it's, it's just, yeah. I mean, let's be fair, it's only Magnus who, who <laughs> I mean, like, they all want to play the World mm-hmm. Championship match and uh, win the title. So, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I understand. No, it's an awkward situation, like this classical versus rapid. I don't know, I've always been a purist on classical. I think we talked about it last episode. It's what we all grew up with mm-hmm. and were so fascinated following the classical line of chess. I would also disagree, I could be wrong on this, but I would disagree that people don't have the patience to follow long games. I think still this, what was it, game six of the Carlson de Pomnesche World Championship match? Like, I, I didn't have the patience to follow all of it, but it was what everyone in the chess world, even my non-chess playing friends, they, they texted me about like how exciting it was and so on. And I do think we have so many Grand Chess Tour, Champions Chess Tour, and so we have so many rapid events. You could argue if some some of these have to be more official World Championship cycles as well. But I'd be sad if we didn't have a classical World Championship match. As for yeah, it not being great for the chess world or it feels obviously it's Magnus' decisions. He's he's earned it all that. It's it is a strange it is a strange feeling. Even doing commentary on this Grand Chess Tour maybe it was very fresh now, but it's so strange if you say yeah. He's still world champion, but he's not going to have defend his title. But he's not retiring. He intends to play tournaments. Um, it's yeah, it's very hard to um, make make sense of it all and how to to imagine the chess world until there's a new world champion who's also the best player in the world, which realistically could take. I don't know. What's the over under on Magnus being dominant? Six years, like could take a while. Take five, six, seven, five. Uh, hard to see how uh, hard to say how his motivation there. Also, well, I want to compliment you for flipping in that you have uh, non chess uh, playing friends, uh, but um, so, many, many, many. No, no. a very rich social life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I was very, I thought that was showing off, uh, but um, yeah, I, I, th- I find it just weird in a way, but also, well, I mean, there's been this criticism again to go back to my all decision. Uh, this discussion, and I think mainly it's just an uh, unfortunate situation where there is n- no really good solution uh, and such, and that's how how it's going to be. I agree that uh, it might become a bit weird that we will have a world champion that's not Magnus, and that, that will be probably a considerable. Well, I mean, imagine Nepomniachtchi wins, right? I mean, we can all remember that he lost by by four points to Magnus, and now we have to call him the world champion. Of course, it's going to feel awkward in a way, right? Um, but um, that's life. I mean, we will see. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can, of course. Uh, it feels weird and uh, it's bad for chess. I think it's bad for the chess world that Magnus. But of course, it's Magnus. He hold, I mean, like uh, he gains his side to to to, and he, of course, it's his decision, hundred percent. And uh, yeah, if he feels uh, he doesn't want to play, he doesn't want to no. play. That's uh, that's it. The big question is how it's gonna feel for him, but no one knows, and he's had time yeah. to give it some thought. I'm still, I'm waiting for the candidates 2024. Um, 
the big battle, Magnus Carlsen versus Jan Nepomneshi for first place to challenge world champion Ding. Right. I'm, I'm still, I'm still ready to take bets that uh, Magnus will, 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 will try a last, a last dance, as we say. Uh, after saying, after seeing this great documentary, it's always feels great. Yeah, these comebacks, you know, like um, I really feel that he will come back at some point. But yeah, he should play baseball for two years. See what happens. Yeah. yeah. You don't believe in it, Peter. No, I just, well, to say that I don't care is too strong. It's just, it's not a relevant talk right now. I mean, to start talking about a comeback yeah. when you have just made a huge decision to quit makes uh, very little sense, right? Then you start showing some regret. I mean, uh, I'm more focused on finding stupid idea for Blitz games and, and stuff like this and to try and win some, some classical tournaments. I mean, if it happens, it happens. But I think, well, you should also understand, for me, it's a strange life situation. I have cared about nothing but matches for, I mean, as long as I can uh, remember. So, um, well, it takes a bit of time to get used to mentally and such, I think. So, somehow to start immediately thinking of getting back is kind of weird, in, in my opinion. I mean, I understand that there's nothing that's definitive here in life, and uh, there is perhaps some likelihood that uh, things might change. For, but right now, that's not the plan. LC has taken a very stupid decision, right? I mean, uh, so... <laughs> We should mention, if people don't know this or are new to the podcast, Peter has been Magnus' coach. He set out, I think, one match, but for four matches he was on the winning side there. And for, I, I hope I don't get your record wrong, for three matches before that he was on the winning side with Vichyana. Yeah, yeah. So Peter is the most winning chess coach in chess history. 7-0 in his last seven World Championship matches. And you stayed neutral in one of the... Carlson, mm -hmm. the first Carlson on a match, right? Yep, correct. Thanks for the advertisement. But uh, yeah, yeah. And, and he won, he won a tournament yeah. with uh, Ishii in 2007 uh, in Mexico. Yeah. I feel like I should praise Peter's achievements Peter, once Peter, in a while so that we can go no. back to mocking when it comes <laughs> yeah, to Yeah, that's, that's good. No, I, so, so it means like, I honestly uh, think it's, it's a pretty good performance, to be honest. But uh, yeah. Anyway. Better like he's on. <laughs> no. It's very hard to argue with. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, no, that's uh, let's uh, debate something controversial instead. Um, the lesson here, kids, is find the best player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that that kind of that's my trick. It works. <laughs> no, basically, this concept of if you can find something that you think will gonna win, if you do nothing at all yourself, then that's a good start. I think uh, that's basically the question. That's why we play for. <laughs> The great Baden-Baden team Ex in Bundesliga. Ex exactly. I did the calculations one season to check what had happened if I had lost all my games. And the results would have been exactly the same. So that, that's really... Yeah, yeah normally. <laughs> no, no. It's like... Uh, any any individual results shouldn't matter very much. No, no. That's uh, the nice thing in Baden. But, well, they got rid of me, but not you. So anyway, that's a sad story. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Should we go down our list of events to cover? Or... Okay. Well, I've been following the exciting events involving the the German players, because in case I didn't mention, I'm the the Bundestrainer, the German head coach. I'm here with them in Chennai. They played some some I don't know how fun stuff. They played this non castling World Championship with I think that's what it called, what's called with Vichy Dimitri Collars. Young German player is the non-castling world champion. Wow. We we accepted we expected a big reception when arriving at Chennai Airport. Yeah. But instead they just quizzed him for like forty five minutes <laughs> at Im at immigration. We all went through very 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 quickly. Okay. But yeah, at some point the question was asked: Did you really play Anand two days ago? And like it was good stuff. Ah, oh, really? I think so. Yeah. No. And uh, uh, but your your you, your team is very young actually. I just uh, I mean like you're only only young players. I mean, uh, what what is the average? Uh, They're quite young. We have Nisipianu for some veteran savvy. Ah. Okay. But other than that, yeah, then it's you young guys. Oh, but well, I mean, Keimer, Colors, Blue Bomb, Swane. They're all. 
They're all young. Yeah, oh, but German chess has done quite well, remember? In my youth, I mean, Denmark and Germany was kind of equal strength. It was pretty embarrassing for Germany, but that has changed completely. I mean, there is a very strong new generation of Germans. Well, I'm insulting you now as we speak, perhaps, but... Uh, I mean, well, also you won the European. No, I didn't. I didn't play chess in your youth yet. That, that is a good retort. I have to agree to that one. <laughs> yeah, respect. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you won this round. Uh, yeah. Well, in your <laughs> Danish defense, um, some of the strongest Danish players aren't aren't very active. No, Svane, uh, he's for been us, playing for, start, for Germany for, start, for, he, for years, and you. Yeah, you haven't been playing for Denmark so much. No, no, but there are some some strong players there as well, no? Like Mats Andersen, Jonas Bjarre. Like no, no, for Denmark such a small well, country population wise. Well, the yeah, point is that players, Denmark has a pretty good team and quite an exciting team. It's just that well, Germany has developed into a chess country, sort of fitting the the size of Germany, and that was not necessarily always the case, right? But uh, maybe I'm wrong. But I think you had some. I don't know. No. To my mind, it's always been yeah, Germany but, has a big breadth of yeah. 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 I don't know, 26, no. 26, 50 players mm -hmm. and not a lot of world-class players. And hopefully one of the young guys will break through and change that in the future. Mm -hmm. But usually that's the way it's been. Exactly. Germany did win the silver medal in like 2000. We won in 2011. Oh, yeah. It's the European team championship. It's not like we've been hopeless in team no, competitions. No, 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 right? no, like, no, no. When was your, what was your last Olympiad, uh, Peter? As a player? That was in Dresden 2008, I think. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's quite. Yeah, yeah, as a first. No, just to just checking. Mm -hmm. I think I wasn't because I don't remember you. No. You played. No, I was in Baku as a coach for the Lithuanian team. Uh, that was the last time. But else, no. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Baku. no. Well, I don't play chess, though. What do you want me to say? I'm, I mean, it's not yeah, like you guys are just chickening a bit. I'm chickening full, 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 full. I mean, speed, right? So. I mean, I'm the only one, not to be, I mean, like, sorry, but I'm the only one playing. So yeah. Well, I'm constantly playing. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. I, I had COVID, so I had to cancel the final Bundesliga round and the German Cup, but I, I would have been there. And Thailand Open, October 22 to 30, I'll be right there. Wow. Olympiad, I didn't make the team. I wasn't quite active enough, so I had to become the coach. Ah. I could have chosen myself. What do you prefer? Probably. No, you know, okay. you know that. You know, I like Olympians, but I don't like playing, so I'm very happy being the coach. You can yeah. see my room in the I background. What's not to like? So, what was what were we talking about? Yeah, I was following the Beal and Dortmund tournaments. Elyanov, our boy. I played Elyanov in Ukraine Germany matches many a time, like 2004, 2005. 2008. I always played Pavel. And he's still kicking. He uh, won the, I don't know what's called, German Deutschland Grand Prix. Crushed it with, what was it? Four and a half out of six, five out of six. A great tournament. So good to see Pavel doing well. Beal. I know you guys didn't follow any of these tournaments, so I'm just reporting. Beal, yeah, Le Kwang Le had a good Le event. Kwang Whenever I see Le Kwang playing, he seems to be doing well. I don't think he's a full-time chess player, but whenever he shows up, he seems to be just very, very good at chess. Very booked he's up, just, um, I think, I think great I, technician. I, 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 for me, it's really a mystery that he didn't get to the top 10. Never. I mean, like, hmm? he, I think I, play, I played him a few times. I was always <laughs> completely out playing. Seems extremely <laughs> strong. Yeah. Well, I mean, I agree without guessing most of his moves. And realizing uh, that actually <laughs> it was very very good moves, so yeah, I mean, and when I check, whenever I check his games, uh, it's uh, I have the same feelings as you, Jan. That uh, okay, this guy is just just coaching. Uh, so that was um, yeah, it's a mystery for me, but uh, why he didn't go higher? But uh, yeah, he's still a very very strong player. Maybe he decided to do other things in life than just playing chess. Which brings us to Peter. Peter, how is the campaign going? Well, I just got confused because while you guys were talking, I had to do something, so I started checking feed on Twitter. and They just tweeted a picture of my wife, so that uh, got me distracted a bit. Um, but come again, you were, you were actually asking about the campaign, or did I get you wrong? Uh, no, I was trying to make a smooth transition to whatever you want to talk about in, in feed, Twitter, 
Your, no, but you, you forgot to, to 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 talk about the Fidel Fisher you met during your trip. Ah, that is uh, true. Yeah, you promised. I met. You, you uh, promised. You promised. I met a lot of people in Dubai Dubai Airport. I mentioned I met Jordan, who seems to live there, and then I yeah. was on the same flight with with Dvorkovic. Dana Reisnitsa was, was there. Um, always very friendly, Dana. So, very very helpful. Yuli Polga was there. I think she's the official commentator. So, so you are traveling in uh, economic, yeah? Ah, that's that's what you want to get to, yeah. Like, I I don't know. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get. I saw <laughs> Judith was in business class, and she's the greatest woman player ever. Um, I wasn't I wasn't that upset about. It. I was I was in economy, but I I used my usual cunning. Um, at some crappy middle seat, but uh, but I got out of it and I sat in some nice empty rows. At some point, a stewardess came over and said, "Excuse me, sir, these these seats you're you're seated in, they're for the crew. But I, I'll allow you to sit here until after after breakfast is served, which was like half an hour before the flight landed. And then she told me, "Nah, it's fine, you can stay." So so there was a happy ending, but yeah, I'm not sure. Peter will probably know this. I didn't see Dvorkovic. Maybe I boarded the plane before him is there a peter what are the rules the president travels first class and the deputy travels business what are, what are the rules i think that the the president travels uh, business class yes i think uh, for instance well i think uh, oh let me not uh, have a go at Sotovsky. i'll just say that i think definitely the prussian president tra- travels a business uh, class yes i rec- remember that uh, when i was flying back from the hansi mansinsk uh, candidates tournament in 2014 that uh, Danilov and Topalov was going uh, together. But I really, uh, well, sort of laughed or enjoyed that Danilov sat in business class because, uh, well, he's the president of European Chess Federation, while well, Topalov, uh, the former world champion, happily went uh, back to the rest of us to the economy class and such. So, uh, well, that's how, how these, these things uh, are. But uh, I think, uh, well... Um, but are you sure about it? Because... I thought I'm not sure what it is for, but I thought I saw some rules or guidelines that the president travels first class and the the deputy business class. Because because uh, I was curious, oh, boy, I was going to be for Boris Pulitz and you. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, why, 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 why did I start this topic? Yeah. I mean, that's all stupid. I okay. honestly don't Sorry. know. It is my uh, question. So it turns out that I haven't checked these kind of uh, things. But I promise you, there will be full. Tra- I thought you'd be all over these types of topics. No, so there will be there will be full transparency of that if you. Well, uh, if you have read the uh, verification committee report, for instance, they are. They're, they're, <laughs> I have no idea what the verification. <laughs> ex- exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are very critical that FIDA, in their sort of, they don't give uh, sort of uh, uh, precise descriptions of how the cash flow is going and stuff. So then you will be more into details, but they only give exact sums and things like that. So, I can't wait. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, you should add yeah. to you. Please add, add to your programs at the supervisor of appeals committee. Yeah, <laughs> business. <laughs> yeah, not <gonna. laughs> yeah. Mr. Fresinet <laughs> in whatever role. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There will be. Uh, no, I mean, like, there will be a transparent. Uh, I'm pretty sure the last time I, mean, I traveled uh, business class was with what Magnus to. Oh, I think to Brazil uh, when I actually had to go go with him there, and they have given us uh, two tickets for that. But. Uh, they, they really looked very suspicious when we went in there and asked to check our tickets, but then it turned out to be fine. But else, uh, else it's been a while, and uh, I'm fine with that, I have to admit. So if I have to get used to it, um, well, that's how it is. But, um, um, well, it sounds like a bit of it's a... a sacrifice you'd be willing to No, make to be honest, be good. I think that, I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't necessarily sound like the, the right way of uh, using funds. I can understand it for the president, for the deputy, a bit less. But it uh, depends. So, by the way, you are coming to Chennai. Who is paying for your? Um, I'm paying for it myself. For you, for you, stay. You, you pay yeah. yourself. That's uh, that's how. Well, that's how how how, how it is. So yeah, you're right. It's the first time I'm paying for. I mean, this go go. I mean, this GoFund campaign could pay. For yeah, it. yeah, it could. But well, sense. we have other people going and such. I don't think uh, paying for my ticket is a is pri- priority, which is quite reasonable. So that I'm. But the the international big uh, big companies that are lining up to get into chess under your guidance, they <clears throat> they can't well, can't jump in on this stage. Well, that would be a bit weird, wouldn't it? Or I don't know. If they no. feel it's an important change, they should help. No. Help funding your campaign and also the booth. I want a nice big booth for <laughs> Boris Pulitz Nielsen. A what? In... A booth? What is that? 
a, a campaign booth, like a, ah. an area where you can do your campaigning. Yeah, this is actually interesting because, uh, well, we have been, all candidates has been offered the booth, but uh, they have to pay 5,000 euros for it. And, uh, well, we are arguing that the rules specify that all candidates has shall has the same amount of space. And we think that what it says shall is something that has to be provided, not something you have to pay for. But let's see about that. So it's not a given we have a booth, uh, unless the GoFundMe goes very well. But, no, I kind of disagree. What we can gather of funds for our own private thing is quite different what we can gather for feed. I don't think... I mean, we cannot go to... You know, big sort of. Uh, but it's not a private thing. If you're campaigning, no, like a campaign needs funding. Well, U.S. politicians, that's all they do, no, but that, funds for that's campaigning. Co- isn't that quite different? I would say. I understand you, but I think these days. I don't know. I think it's. I good. mean, for me, it is embarrassing to ask uh, for money for a Ukrainian um, chess campaign when there is all these other things that are much more relevant in this context. So that I, I mean. Well, I have not shared this GoFundMe myself simply because I think it's too it's hard to argue with that argument. But that applies to everything that is yeah, but, directly but that, supporting Ukraine in the war. But yeah. that is a bit of the reality that somehow to ask for money for a campaign, uh, I couldn't get myself to do. I, I, I chose to pay myself. But then it's also strange to ask for money for a chess tournament. No, no that I think is different. But also, we are not asking for money. We are trying to have a business transaction. I think asking for these things are, I mean, donations. That's just giving and not getting anything particularly bad. And that's what exactly what we're saying. The problem isn't the chess world. That, getting... that let's say, I mean, what has Russian railways gotten back? Nothing is my impression, right? I mean, well, we want to sell them a product uh, that's beneficial for both, not just having living on donations. Thanks for the campaign time. But in order way. for that product um, to be there, you would have to win the election, according yeah, to Yeah, and that is, that is well, up to the delegates. I mean, maybe they listen to the... The Chicken Chess Club podcast and gets uh, overwhelmed by the, the the strength of our arguments and such. Right? I mean that 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 is that is up to the. Can you repeat the, the core <laughs> arguments? What was it again? <laughs> Transparency, we, less uh, Russian influence. We, is that is that it? We rock. They suck. Right? I mean, basically, it's come down to that. No, I mean that's not a bad slogan. No, I thought I thought that's. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, no, I understand you, but well, also. We are running on a sort of uh, agenda of transparency and such. It's not, I mean, I'm sorry, but you're not going to get uh, free booze or, or stuff like this from us. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Well, you might. No but... booze at the booth. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I mean, we, we, we're we doing it differently. I mean, it's an asymmetric uh, campaign. There's no doubt about that. Anyway, I, I'm glad you're coming here. I'll I'll <laughs> restrict my bullying. I think it's good you should. No, 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 no. Yeah. So. We'll... <laughs> We'll see where it goes. I thought we should talk a bit about so fi- fi- Filatov doing? also, no? Or... Yeah, go ahead. No, no, this is... We, are the, we, are just, we, 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 we don't want to... Uh, just, no, I think the, the, the uh, main thing... Before the show, we are just way too... The main thing that happens to, uh, just politically since, to, since last week is that uh, Filatov, the president of the Russian Chess Federation, made a speech in the, in the, the Russian, uh, on Chess Day in the sort of... Uh, well, the house of the Russian Chess Federation. And, well, he says it uh, extremely straightforwardly what their plan is, that on the 7th of August, they will elect uh, Dvorkovich as president, and uh, that's important for, for Russia. And uh, on the 8th, they will ask for a secret ballot uh, where they're trying to break the, the sanctions. So basically, they will have a vote on first, can Russian players play in Paralympics uh, games? Can the next vote will be on can they play in senior and youth events? And third vote will be can they play in uh, sort of uh, the, the absolute open events? And uh, no, they are not uh, hiding it. So that is actually going to be, a, I think, the severe battle uh, and very interesting. Um, and uh, So what's your position? You don't want Russian and Belarusian players to play in tournaments? Well, this one we're talking about teams even. Uh, I think that goes okay. ag- goes against IOC and such. I don't know if it will be illegal for, for us to play, but, uh, I mean, f- well, that would put, I think, at the moment, chess is uh, the, the federation that is perhaps, let's say, doing least of sanctions against r- Russian, but there is a other, con- well, other sports who does the same. Should we actually sort of uh, vote for the Russian suggestion? Well, it will put us at the forefront. That's the one who has by far the least sanctions against Russian players. Or, or teams, so, so that's going to be very interesting. Do the, the, yep. Do, do you think that what FIDE is doing now, so by not allowing Russian and uh, Russian teams in uh, 
in Olympia and so on, but letting the player who are ready to play on the neutral flag is okay, or you would do it differently? I don't think, well, I think our answer is that for a start, it's to feed the council who has to decide on this, not the president. Um, well, for my. Yeah, but what would be. Your yeah, answer? I don't know. Well, for a start, if we were there, we would have gotten rid of the problem of having this strong Russian influence. I mean, for me, the problem is a bit of the mix, uh, I would say. If we were there, we would definitely also suggest, I think, to suspend, suspend the Russian Chess Federation. For me, it's a problem that Russian chess players are playing for the Russian Chess Federation, and the Russian Chess Federation uh, is connected to Peshkov and Shoigu and uh, politics. I mean, well, I think under us, our leadership, there will be no one representing the Russian Chess Federation. The Russian Chess Federation will be... So you would be okay with Nepomnesi, let's say, playing under feet of flag? Well, I, I, I think the debate would be that uh, are we going to allow Russian players to play with absolutely no connection to the Russian uh, Chess Federation? But you cannot be... So you would ask... So, so if Nepo wants to play for the title in, in March, you would ask him to change his federation? Well, I mean, I think we would rather do it automatically. Again, I get the impression you haven't followed Sotovsky's Twitter all day. Uh, but, well, he's saying that the, the State Duma has a, had a proposal where they want to make it a uh, punishment if you change your federation as a Russian player. I think uh, Sur- Surov corrected him and says that it's only a proposal, not a law. But there is this kind of implication that there is pressure on Russian players. And, uh, well, I would argue that if the Russian state put pressure of players not to leave the federation, we should make it automatic. Because at the moment, well, if they have to voluntarily leave the federation, it puts pressure on people because some others are not doing it. So let's say these players who have left the country, I think Fedosev and Drakin, for instance, um, Mm -hmm. well, they stand out. And then they have to take a risk if they actually don't want to represent uh, the Russian Chess Federation. While if you just uh, illegalize the Russian Chess Federation and remove all the players, it becomes an automatic thing and they're not on the risk, uh, if you get my point. So this might ah, okay. be slightly uh, okay. slightly off topic, but I heard from yeah strong Russian players that left the country that it's very difficult for them to stay um, legally in in Europe, and that's that can't be what we what we want. No. Like, what what is the what is the idea there? I'm very confused by the European Union politics on these things. Like, because we can't ask people to do that, and obviously, I don't have anything to say. But in general, it seems like that's what um, we are applauding morally. People leaving the country and then make it very hard for them mm-hmm. to stay anywhere. It feels. Yeah, it feels wrong. Yeah, I don't know if they just, I mean, maybe they can ask for political asylum. I don't understand the, the implications and such, to be honest. Uh, I, I get your point. It's complicated. And I don't think we have uh, sufficient knowledge to, to say that. What I can sort of say quite strongly is that, uh, well, we find it completely unreasonable that uh, the Russian Chess Federation is, is allowed to have uh, Shaigu and Peskov in the leadership and face, no, face any kind of... Uh, problems for that. I know the European Chess Federation this weekend had a meeting and, and took a strong stand for that, which we fully support. But uh, it's still strange for us that if you go against sort of Russia and Belarus like this, I think you should also apply the same principles against Dvorko, which is uh, very much connected to, to the Kremlin as well. But uh, well, now I'm probably slightly leaning towards campaigning once again by, by mistake. But let, let, let's praise Filatov for his transfer. Filatov is, uh, he's, he's a, not hiding anything. He's a straightforward guy. I mean, he's, 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 he says what he thinks. Yeah, or maybe he's under pressure from someone higher in the system than him. It, it's complicated. Well, you should also understand, Filatov says it in in Russian. There is typically quite a, well, you could say the same with Dvorkovich, and I'll start campaigning again, that there will be a difference what they say in English and in Russian or in French uh, for, for Filatov's uh, case, right? But well, you, you have Google Translate crushing. Well, I, crushing the I understand, but, well, to Google Translate... Uh, think Filatov speaks French? Well, for instance, uh, there was this speech that he made. I mean, that you cannot Google Translate. It actually takes some effort to to, to translate it into to English and such, right? Ah, um, oh, come on. Uh, no. But also, 
It's a two minute ah, speech. Yeah. So. Okay, fair. It's much longer. We we cut it, but yes. Uh, <laughs> but are you are you all right? It's it's very surprising that Filatov extremely openly saying that well we have this plan that under seven this happened and under eight these things will happen and we're going to bring a, uh, a bunch of lawyers to to make it happen. But maybe I'm pretty sure they haven't given away all the, the tricks and such. But it's as got- the president of the Russian Chess Federation, it has to be his interest that Russian players can play as well. No, like. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I. So it doesn't. I mean, doesn't sound too shocking to me. No, but it's it's complicated in the way. Uh, I mean, it's against uh, IOC recommendations uh, and such. And I thought basically um, they would generally be be happy about it. Also, recently in, in CAS, this is a sports uh, juridical thing in, in in Lausanne. I think Russia lost a case recently where they wanted to have the football teams back. I mean, the football teams are banned from the Euro League, Champions League, and, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, and um, so, I mean, no, it, well, that he actually, well, he was specifically naming that there's going to be this uh, secret ballot and they will try a win a vote there. That's going to be, I mean, probably almost as exciting as uh, the vote on the 7th for, for FIDE presidency. I'm not an expert, but announcing a secret ballot seems to make it less secret. No, no, that it is a no. He's saying that the voting method is secret. I mean, it's also a secret ballot uh, for the, I mean... Um, uh, for the FIDE presidency. And, uh, well, the argument, I guess, is that in a secret ballot, well, people will not be held accountable afterwards, so everything can happen and such. So that's, uh, no, that's going to be, uh, the FIDE Congress seems to be quite uh, interesting for a number of reasons. So uh, you shouldn't miss it. Can't wait. No. Can't wait. Can, can we get in there? Is it in Chennai? Like, uh... I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I would, of course, be in favor of full transparency, but uh, as I haven't uh, have power, power yet, I cannot guarantee it. Uh, I, I remember actually in 2000 and maybe 16 or such, um, uh, there was a FIDE board council uh, at a tournament where Magnus was playing. And I was sort of telling them jokingly, yeah, well, I should have uh, just told you I was Magnus' representative because he had part of the board. Then I could have seen the meeting. I said, well, you could just have walked in. It's completely open. So I honestly don't know uh, how these things are. But uh, that has changed since then. But- I can't wait for these things to get resolved one way or another i understand they're they're important to you and to the chess world <laughs> but for the podcast i think the really? the hits of transparency and less russian influence have been covered so we need we need new new narratives and now we magnus is gone you like, can, you uh, can, what will there be to talk about laurent doesn't want to talk about his private life we're running out of stuff here Maybe you're right that it's just, well, no, I honestly don't know what I should talk about afterwards. But also, it's a pity that you start feeling fatigue when election day is so close, right? That's what they're hoping. No, 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 that I'm excited about. But uh, I'm also very excited about yeah, not yeah. talking about transparency and feeling. No, no, well, <laughs> no, what, am I, make, what am I going to uh, tweet about? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> nah, you'll so find some. Uh, yeah, uh, right. History. So we have another episode before, before the election day. So I think we should make a prediction. Like, how many votes uh, by Spread Simpson will, will, will make? So sick that I know the candidates even. Like, I know Sharipov is a, <laughs> yeah. is a candidate. Why would I know these things? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. you, you wake <laughs> up when we start talking about these things. <laughs> sure. Okay, so what's your predictions, Laurent? I don't know. Uh, no, I don't know. I will have to think about it. I will do it the next week. I promise. I mean, like, I don't know. Uh, we have one more episode before the great, the uh, great election. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I have to check how, how much Kapov did and so on. Yeah, in 2010, and, uh, we should have like Vichy or some someone on or Sutovsky to for transparency for no, fairness. No, I saw. You understand? For me, it's going to be a bit weird. I mean, it's always a dream for me to go to Chennai to meet Vichy and such. And now I actually go to Chennai, but it was not about given that we're going to talk, right? So I don't know. It's going to pan, pan out, to be honest. <laughs> it's a bit weird. So is it, um, is it true the, the scenario? Um, I saw a tweet from Danilov. He's always very, I mean, <laughs> very <laughs> aggressive in his tweet. And his favorite scenario is uh, A, Dvokovic wins the election. B, he gets uh, sanctioned uh, right after the election, and then uh, Vichy has to organize a uh, new election six in the... Yeah, I mean, that, that's how the rules are, that, um, well, if the president resigns, then the deputy takes over, but there has to be arranged, uh, I think, a general assembly in, 
between half or one year. I forgot the exact rules. So, well, that's basically six months. that's basically the same as uh, should um, should uh, Boris Polis resign. I will be president, but uh, only as a temporary figure in a way. If I have to show off oh. off a bit, then it's exactly the same here in Lithuania. Should the president resign, my wife will take over, but in a temporary role until those uh, new elections. So that's basically a common uh, theme. So that, so that could be, be the big, the big Nielsen day. Your wife takes over, and you take over, and all of a sudden you are running Lithuania yeah, and feed it. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, it's a theme. <laughs> Things are well. Yeah, but okay, could you be uh, slightly more quiet about that? But yeah. Okay. okay sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, then there's your new campaign yeah. song. I sanctioned the sheriff, but I did not sanction the deputy. Can't wait. <laughs> wow. The Bermuda party. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so if, let's say, <laughs> let's take it to more or less, more realistic scenario. So it could be like uh, Vichy would be the the second uh, FIDE president, former world champion. Yeah, the other. I think only one, no? Was I think you're right. Campomanes was never a chess world champion? <laughs> no, he <it> wasn't. <laughs> Campomanes. Just making sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I think so. Yeah. No, you should have, maybe. No, but <laughs> it cannot be ruled out completely, indeed. But, um, but uh, Yumshinov was a good blitz player, but not... Uh, but also, we had complaints that we are co colluding with... Um, with Kuyatli, by the way, uh, the Fide lawyer wrote a strong letter to us that we were under suspicions for colluding with uh, Kuyatli. That's complete nonsense. But uh, you, you mean our team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, um, let's see. There's always some I dirty. Mean, you, yeah. No, I'm not making. I'm annoyed now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we are now because Qu yeah, Kuyatli is talking about transparency. No, right there now, is. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I like that Kuyatli <laughs> embraced <laughs> transparency. <laughs> I like this is a novelty for his uh, 25 years <laughs> into chess politics. I mean, like, yeah, this novelty he came up with is very strong, you know. I know. New move. Well, uh, transparency. <laughs> no, <laughs> but there, Boris Polis was good. We had this Nordic uh, debate, and sort of uh, Coatley was praising transparency as one of his key things. And uh, Boris Polis asked, Well, if you're so much in favor of transparency, why didn't you announce beforehand that you are running, but only after uh, things? And then he said, Well, yeah. It's a different style of campaigning than us, which is true. But um, anyway, I think he's using his networks and such. But um, we will see. We will see how it goes. But also, as far as I understand, the election is like with four candidates. There will be first one vote, and if none of the candidates have fifty percent, there will be a second vote by the the two leaders. Um, so like this. So it could be. A it's like French. It's like French elections. First round, second round. Yeah. Yeah, but for instance. But, uh, uh, but how does it work? Do you have to take a picture of your vote in both rounds and send it to get <laughs> um, rewarded or just, just in the first round? Yeah, honestly, I thought earlier you're not allowed to bring a phone in there, but I don't know how they do it anymore. Okay. And how much time do we have? The German the delegate will be in out? touch directly. I, I don't know the details, to be honest. Um, so... As far as I understand, also, there will be no presidential debate. Each debate has a uh, candidate has like 15 minutes to talk or something like this. And uh, I think they're clever enough not to let the, the deputies talk, for instance, and such. So I think the, the delegates will not have to, to listen to me. Or wish for that matter. Okay, that's a pity. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. Um, that is very sad. Does, that is sad. Does the world champion as a member of... Uh, uh, you can come and talk to the General Assembly or not? I don't know. I'm not sure he'll be let in in principle. Maybe he's a honorary member of the FIDE Council, so maybe, but I'm not completely sure. Again, I don't know. Uh, I, just, I mean, it's a new thing for me, Lohan. I, mean, I haven't been a FIDE official uh, candidate before, so we'll see uh, how it goes. Yeah, you, uh, have, you, have, you, have, you, have you ever seen uh, Congress? Or not in FIDE. Uh, I have, been, I have to been to ECU at some point, but not... No, the problem is I've been to these meetings. It's very boring. I, I, well, I have. Um, but what did you do there again, Jan? You are everywhere. I mean, I'm interested in, in stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like to uh, get a taste. That's very boring. Come Normally, on, yeah. they just talk about I don't know some senior championship. Where is it held? Uh, here, there, like. Uh, um, that was a meeting I went to. I have seen some online, to be honest. So 
Yeah. No disrespect to senior championships, but it it was long. It was long. I sat there at the back for four or five hours. I it, yeah, it felt like being being back in class. It was hard to keep my attention up. <laughs> but uh, under under Peter Heine's smooth but fair and transparent leadership, I'm sure the meetings will also be more more entertaining. Like uh, yeah, throwing some jokes there. Uh, could be yeah. Um, uh, in fairness. I can't recall if I went to ECU or FIDE no, you thingy. See. I went to something. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a while. Yeah. This is going to change. But I will give you a thorough report when we have a podcast in uh, two or three weeks. I promise that. I will, and I, I will not uh, hide anything. You can ask me whatever you feel like. It looks looks like we're really out of stuff to yeah. to talk about. The the FIDE Council, we're down to minus, minus 10 <laughs> listeners. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we have any questions? We don't have questions, right? No. I can report from the scene in in India, but there's not much happening. It's quiet here. Not a lot of teams have arrived yet. <laughs> That's because the tournament starts, the looks starts in three days. Absolutely. Weather is nice. It's very warm. It's warmer than the reports say. You can really feel feel yeah, the yeah. heat. Like uh, so. How is the food? Bring bring light clothes. In our hotel, it's excellent. Like, like it's fantastic. Yeah, but is it the kind of uh, yeah. uh, typical Indian food, or what should I uh, look forward to? I mean, our very nice hotel. Um, you can you can choose like we had a choice okay. of um, Indian dishes that were not too spicy for Western uh -huh. tastes. Like there was some Thai green curry, there was some grill grilled chicken. Like there was everything. There was uh, was some nice brownies, uh, decent chocolate hazelnut pudding for dessert. Like life life is rough, <laughs> but we'll we'll make it. Hmm. So let's let's uh, the ice let's cream. The ice cream yeah. got a lot of praise. Okay. Do you have a chicken? I had chicken for lunch. Uh, chicken of the week. <laughs> um, That's your favorite. I, no, it's rough for me. I never chicken. think of it beforehand, and then I'm always, I'm always embarrassed. Did anybody chicken out from anything? Wesley, you were right. I think he started making some draws in this Grand Chess Tour near the finish line. I was hoping my boy Wesley. Would to would manage to give Magnus a run for his money, but he didn't quite get there. Other chickening, I frankly can't think of anything. Peter is coming here, so we can't call him a chicken for just being a Twitter warrior. Excuse and me, I'm going to Chennai. I'm running for office. Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I can't. No, no. I can't call you a chicken at all. You're coming. No. Like for my own money. Um, that's no. I don't have. Okay, that's just. Stupid that's bad fundraising. That's yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not impressive. Incompetence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so probably I won't see you in my very nice hotel. No, no, no. I don't have a room yet, by the way. So anyway, <laughs> how big is your room? Speak, no. Speaking out loud. <laughs> I don't know. Do we have video <laughs> podcast? Like, no, it's it's not. It's no, not. He, no, no, he, uh, <laughs> it's not for the podcast. He wants to sleep in your. <laughs> ah, okay. That, that, <laughs> no, we, no, no, we can't. We can't share the bed. That's uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> too much <I> mean, transparency. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Alan yeah. spotted it immediately. He's not. He's. Uh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay, no, of course. Okay. So what is uh, what, what is your what is your chicken of the week, uh, Peter? <sighs> yeah. So Topski is yeah. still. I mean, now today. They were sort of asking that we should debate on chess base India and such, but um, he's dodging the the question. Uh, I think oh, it's pretty obvious that he's been told not to do it by his boss, so he's just coming up with all kind of excuses. But I said, yeah, I don't know. I, but I think you should stop start hitting him with the stop campaigning. Let's debate double whammy. Do it in the same tweet. Just to, <laughs> yeah, that is to, true. To, that, to is, that, tweet. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> just to every every one of his tweets, you should reply. Stop campaigning. Let's debate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is no. Uh, can you get it as a header? That would be nice in the end. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's like and I think Cartago should be destroyed. Yeah. So no, I don't. Uh, I I think I came up with some kind of skewed reason for Geary, but that was probably. Then probably I'm going back 14 days. That's probably unreasonable, right? I thought somehow that he didn't play on when he. In general, this chicken of the week. Like, can we just say <laughs> Peter nominates Sotowski, Laurent nominates Giri? They're, they're the, your chicken yeah, of the week exactly. every, every month uh, and be done with it? Every it week. is uh, a bit unimpressive, I would say. It's. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's a bit played. No, we like action. I mean, it's somehow it's quiet before the storm. I mean, you sit there in your comfortable room. Well, let's nominate. Room. Let's nominate. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Agia yeah, is. <laughs> yeah, but <it's> also, <laughs> there you go. Like it's. Yeah. I mean, people who declare. Fascinating how your mind works. I, yeah. Okay. I, I could, I could yeah. nominate. <laughs> MVL, Alireza, and Bakotov. Ah, oh, they're not going. They're yeah, Olympiad those are now. fair choices. Yeah. All the yeah, stars. because now okay. Olympiad is starting soon, and we would have been number two with Hajabov. Uh, but uh, down I, I don't think I don't think it's chickenness. It's just I don't want to play. Right? It's not well chicken. It's because you're afraid. Yeah, because they're afraid to. Go, I mean, like uh, because the place is far and it's hot. Yeah, and but that is the usual excuses. It's not. Uh, I mean, Look at my room. It's it's rough here. Yeah, I have to go for for dinner soon. Ugh, but I ate so much. Yeah, they just no. brought brought in some complimentary um, chocolate with some nuts from from the hotel. So I'm really not that hungry. I'm not sure how I'll do it. But no, of course I'm not very impressed to. with. Uh, uh, I'm thinking. Yeah. Not great, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, it's all right. Well, like you don't want to pay, so. on the subject of debating uh, Sotovsky, I just uh, reminded someone to bring me boxing glove that I will bring for the trip, so I'm, I'm taking it serious. Always, always a great look to pose with boxing gloves. Mm-hmm. We, we've seen that recently, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we got nothing this week. Let's admit it. Yeah. I made it to Chennai. Yeah. Laurent and Peter are preparing to come here. Soon we'll be reporting from the Olympia. We'll give you all the gossip. Laurent Fresinet has promised to film the entire Bermuda party. If there's any <laughs> inappropriate dancing, it will be on this podcast. Oof. Oof. Yeah, that's for I sure. I can't wait. That's for sure. Yeah. Don't play. I'll, Thank you. Okay. We'll have a good time. Laurent. We'll have some drinks at the Bermuda party, even if Peter doesn't pay. Doesn't pay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, ah, find ah, some, we'll find some cam- campaign to sponsor. You, you will have some drinks. I will get to Angels. As, as, <laughs> as we say. As, as always. As we do. As always. So as take always. their drinks, but vote for us. It's our motto. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sa- safe trip, Laurent. Thank you.